as well on its, on its rocky mountain sides, known in Korea as Dak. All right, so I was right, it's Mulberry. Um, but that was so good. There was so much good information. Um, yeah. Like having like having like superior, you know, like having like the way you address someone that you love or like, you know, high, high, you know, it's just like it's positive associations. <clears throat> but I'm glad that it is Mulberry. Okay, um, as far as getting the fish goes, um, if the fish feels a little flame-like. Um, I'm going to try and get the triangle of the head. I'm going to start there. And then I'm going to make that head S curve into the fin on the top. And then I think I'm going to make the whole body sweep down. And then add the fin at the bottom. There's this little fork at the tail that feels a little like a snake's tongue. It doesn't feel like a fishtail, but that's all right. Um, I'm gonna put a line where the head is separated. You could make a case that those are the gills. Now my key element of the fish, I'm gonna try and start with the same size triangle. I'm gonna modify it so that it's actually more symmetrical. I'm going to follow the same process so I can increase my chances of symmetry. So I don't care how anybody does it, just do it both on the same side. So I, <clears throat> you know, the system of, you know, however you draw the fish, just repeat that method. So it becomes a system, not a goal. And the more you can stay consistent with that system, then the, um, it increases the chances of the, um, ref, you know, the reflective mirrored image. SB. What's SB stand for? Spelling. Small brush. Small. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. It might be a small brush. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Give me that little guy. This is a point three. <clears throat> so when you ink stuff, you get a second chance. Oh my God. Should I go get my readers? Yes. No, I can't. And the see readers, how much. The readers make me dizzy. That's because me... you're not, well, never mind. I'm not used to them. Right. Or I might not fully need them. No, I, th I think you need time to allow your eyes to um, get used to them. Yeah. That's what I think. Oh, I can't wait to erase that middle square. <clears throat> so the it's like the, the, the word hope carries weight and carries significance and you can use it, um, you know, for, you know, as, as a, for power. Um, it's a wonderful concept and it's a, it's a great thing. It's a hope I think is actually a habit. Um, you could think about it as a habit, um, but how did you communicate these ideas? Um, you know, via letters or spoken word, or even like lyrics in a song, it's like a little bit more advanced. But then, you know, using a signet, like a, a symbol for the concept of hope, um, we could kind of, I kind of want to read into it a little bit with these dual fish. <laughs> All right, let me let this rest a second. I'm gonna run down and grab my water. Um, and then what else am I gonna do? No bite. I'm gonna look for this other book. Uh -huh. 
so we can have some fun with the poems. And I, Michaela, I, or uh, Kaya, I'm sorry. Uh, I have a new student on Tuesday night named Michaela, and she's so sweet. Um, let me go, go get this book, but yeah, it was, it was in the summer. And this paper is just so good. I wonder if I should color this. Maybe we'll color it. I'm gonna color it. Yes. So I wanna make sure the book's not in this bookshelf. So I don't think it is. <clears throat> okay, no, it's not. <clears throat> Kaya, how's your week going? It's good. How's yours? It's going okay. No complaints. I would really like to have seen snow, although I really dislike driving in it. I think it's a lot of, uh, I think it's really beautiful to see the first snowfall. Mm -hmm. So it's really interesting, you know, I got up for a moment and came back and looked at the fish and my fins were going completely in the wrong direction. Like these, the top fin, you know, that's connected to the head is going up and mine was going in the complete opposite direction. So now that I've slowed down a little bit, you know, it's much easier to see that. Although how you can draw a fish without making it really look like a fish. Um, I've conquered that. Okay. Yes. We've got the smoker going. <laughs> what are you cooking? Um, a pork tenderloin. Ooh. I think there's, a, hopefully there's enough time for the ink to dry. What am I doing? I don't know. It's going to be bad. Did you and Kristen ever get those uh, steaks from Wegmans? Uh, I think so. I think they're in the freezer though. Got it. She feels so compelled. Whenever their meat comes in the house, she just throws it in the freezer. And then I don't, I forget that we have it. I usually, I usually buy meat for that day or the, the you know, like a day in advance. So I bought this pork yesterday. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm going blue with the fish, but I'm going to go light. Mm-hmm. The dark blue, but I'm going light with the dark blue. And I went with a gel pen for the middle. You can't really see it in this video, um, but it is a, it's like a high intensity sparkle, <laughs> sparkle oh, wow. yellow green. There is in theory glitter. Now all the gel pens don't have to be glitter, right? No, no, like the half of them. I went through like a huge gel phase, a gel pen phase. Yeah. Like, do you remember that over the summer? I do. Two summers ago? Yeah. Very exciting. I do. Kaya, how are you coming along? It's bad. <laughs> is it somewhat bad or is it really bad? It's really bad. Well, Mine's guess good. what? My fish are really bad. They they really look like cute birds. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat>
Here's the fun part. I'm going to embellish. I don't know what to do though. I had a, um, I was thinking like a radiating, it's like a radiating, like a, almost like it's a lighthouse. It was like a beacon. Yeah. One, two. Hmm. I definitely see this on a boat. Yeah, not at all. Yes, Kristen. I turned it on. All you have to do is plug it. All you have to do is lay it, lay it on there and plug in the probe. Um, I don't know what to tell you. It's on. It's at 97 degrees on its way to 240. And I um, realize I'm forgetting to look up at the source and back at my drawing, up and down and up and down. And for me, that is so critical. I mean, unless I get to a point where, you know, I wanna really deviate, which is fine, but I need to get down the source first. Just saying. That's good. No, I'm. I'm. Th I'm just thinking. I don't know. I think this is a good. I think when I erase the pencil lines, I think it's going to look good. I just. I don't know if I. And now I feel a little bit bad. I'm like the shining beacon of hope. I think that's what I was kind of like going for. Mm -hmm. So why are you feeling bad? Um. I, it's just whenever you do, I, I, I question, I question my, um, I just question it. You know, I haven't, the, none of the, like, so the reason I don't like it is because none of the, all the other forms are clearly defined shapes. There's no mm -hmm. kind of like rogue lines, like independent lines. Now, if I slide this over, 617, 617 is the symbol for faith. I think we should do this one as well. Um, see how there's like just a, a flat one dimensional line? Yeah. Lines are 1D. Um, everything else that's in the, in the hope is 2D, meaning they're, they're like shapes. Um, and I introduced a one dimensional aspect into a design that was completely two dimensional. <clears throat> so I think that's what it kind of that's what i think threw me a little bit got it and now that you show 617 i must say and i'm really not using this as a point the finger but i think this artist has a problem with drawing fish <laughs> maybe maybe all right here's this is how this is my solution to keeping both on the screen at once so you're finished, six eighteen. Uh, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna. Th I'm gonna think on it. Okay. When I say think on it, I mean I'm going to uh, come back. I'm gonna erase the. I'll erase the thing. I'll erase the pencil lines. Okay. Right. And I might even write. I might even write hope underneath it. And I'm wondering if I should. You know what like if my this is my this is obviously like a mariner like kind of a christian mariner um attempt at you know his, his like creating a symbol um and you know i feel like we're at a position like you know we live in the 21st century we could i mean i we could create our own kind of signet for these concepts and i'm leaning i'm, I'm like considering that that's all. All right, I've got my vertical of this kind of, it's a trident. 
I think is interesting. You know, it's like Poseidon, it's almost like a Poseidon reference with the trident pointed down. All right, and now I've got my left side, my right side belly. I'm gonna go mark for mark, I think on this one. I'm not gonna try and sketch the whole fish at once. I'm gonna keep going symmetry by symmetry, symmetrical element by symmetrical element. Um, this top portion is a real treat, I have to admit. It's almost like cursive. There's a spiral, mm -hmm. another spiral, and then another spiral. And then that leads us into the uh, dolphin's head. And I'm gonna call it a dolphin. Wow. I did not break that up. How did that line split? I have to rewatch that tape. I thought I did it in one constant line. So I don't know if you saw that, but I went up with one loop, middle loop, third loop, and then I spiraled down his back. Yeah. Bump, bumped into his head, extended out into the the beak. Yeah. And I could come back into the mouth. There's a fin. What was head. what was wrong with that? Um, I, I guess at some point I had picked up my pencil in the middle of his back. Oh, oh, oh okay. Got it. Spiral. So were you were you reaching for hokusoi? <sighs> that's what I thought of as I was watching you. Definitely, that was what came to my mind as well. Like the con that constant. Yeah. On the yeah, way. yeah. 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 <clears throat> the corners of the fish's mouth are so funny. All right, so I'm going to extend these to connect. Extend these to connect. I probably should have done that. I should have done that with my, in the pen realm. I like this one even better. You do? The, yeah, I do. The dual fish are fun. I don't know what to say. You don't like this one? Uh, no, no. Kaya, what are you thinking? What are your thoughts about the second one? I like it better. You do? Well, what is it you both like better? I think the fish have more personality. There's more movement. I think it's, yeah, I just, I think I like the fish better. But I do like the larger curves. So what is this? This is faith. F-A-I-T-H. Is that right? F I I T H. Yeah. Stacy, you have to replace. You have to replace the battery. Battery. Which battery? I think your your smoke detector is beeping. It's your puppy. Yeah, don't even. What do you say? That, do you hear that beep? Maybe it's Kaya. I think Kaya's on mute though. No, I really don't hear a beep. Are you being funny? Because you're not being funny. <laughs> I wish, I wish I was that creative. I don't think, I don't think maliciously. No, no, no. The fish, ta-da. I made some serious corrections on that one that one was that one took 
That one took some courage with the pen. I didn't have oh, I like, I really like how you did your lettering. It's completely um, uh, so in line <laughs> with that base. Yeah, I, ex I, I spelled it wrong. I spelled it wrong. I was like F I A T because I'm my dyslexia. I got it. I was like, oh, A is in the middle. So they put A in the middle. I was like, oh, no, that's not right. Oh, I see what you're saying. But no, it doesn't matter. I think it's, I think it's, it's kind of cryptic. It's kind of like, it's, it's cryptic. I, 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 I like it the way that it is. I got to do the right blue. I'm going to do like a dolphin blue for the, for those fish though. <clears throat> Oh, sorry, no, I just bumped that camera hard. Okay, while we're having so much fun drawing, are we ready? An arc is an imaginary mathematical shape defined by a segment of a circle, while an Arch is an architectural solid, often but not always, based on one or more arcs. Thank you. It's wonderful. I didn't. I didn't understand that at I, all. Yeah, I think. I I think I could have if I, if I was on Jeopardy. I think I could have gotten it, but um, that makes it so much clearer. <laughs> Listen to these dogs down there. I, I hear them. They won't stop. Do they smell whatever? Oh, no. You haven't put the meat on yet, right? Oh, I think she did put it on. Oh, oh. I hope she put it on. Um, I don't know. I'll know if she put it on. Yeah, so she, it's on there because there's a temperature probe. That's good. So a lot of guys would smoke this at 220, but I was watching a couple of videos and they said anywhere between 220 and 240. So it's up to 215 right now. So it's perfectly fine to be on the smoker. I mean, I bet some, and, and you could, I mean, you could smoke it for a longer period. Like you could smoke it at 200 degrees. It just takes a lot longer the meat to cook but you get all the smoke you get like more smoky flavor so like the lower the temperature the longer it takes to cook but because it's on there longer it gets more smoke flavor got it um, and Kristen, because she had the covid um is having a difficult time tasting and smelling things but she can smell she can taste the smoked flavor so she likes to get the smoke stuff yeah i wonder <clears throat> if um Dude, this ginger tea would um help her to feel better yeah we've got a bunch of ginger we also learned this jamaican uh remedy where oh and then i'll tell you my jamaican remedy but go ahead you um you basically cook an orange on the open flame with the skin on and you char the outside and then you peel it and it peels pretty easily after it's been like cooked thoroughly and then you rip out the fruit you mash up brown sugar in it and it's supposed to bring back your taste and we oh, well, this, this is for um, lung and coughing, to clear your lungs and for coughing. Yeah, what is it? It's a mixture of honey and lime. And it, it's, I can't remember t if it tastes really good or really bad. Um, no, it tastes good. Kristen's, but, Kristen's got a cough and she's been drinking lemon juice and honey. No, it's lime. It's lime, and supposedly lime, it's man. different from lemon, but it's a big deal apparently in Jamaica. I mean, my friend, who's a doctor, said, "I mean, I was on other medication, but he said you have to drink the, as much of this throughout the day as possible." So there you have it, from one source. What was your, what were your ailments? Just a I had bronchitis with a really bad cough. Mm. Mm. 
<clears throat> okay. Do you guys care if we keep going on this one? I'm gonna find it. I'm gonna actually find a concept before I know what the image looks like. I'm okay with it. Okay, so there's one called the Sword of Expulsion. So in the Old Testament, when Adam and Eve ate from the Tree of Knowledge, did did the angel expel them, or did God expel them via the angel? We might have to work that I, out. I don't know. Okay, so there's the Holy Spirit. Let's do the Holy Spirit. That one's going to be awesome. Okay. Let's do the 628. Ooh, the Virgin Mary is really nice too. That's a sword and a heart. And then 631 is peace. I should, just, I should actually be writing it down. Peace. Virgin Mary, 628. 626, Holy Spirit. Sort of small. Six twenty seven is the the Lamb of God, Agnes de Die. Stacy, could you look up the the, the A G N U S? Agnes. A N A no A G N U S Agnes and then D I D E I. Okay, let's do the Holy Spirit. So it means the most powerful. Are we ready? Yeah. And it's pronounced Agnes Day. Oh, good. A thick, a figure of a lamb bearing a cross or a flag as an emblem of Christ. Oh yeah, there it is. This is that's oh, Agnes Day. Oh. Also, within the Christian church, an invocation beginning with the words, Lamb of God, forming a set part of the, lit of the liturgy. Takes away the sins of the world. Okay, here's another. Are we ready or are we done? No, no, please. English, Lamb of God. Designation of Jesus Christ in Christian liturgi liturgical usage, based on the saying of John the Baptist, quote, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, end quote. Yeah, he does. Um, yeah, that's awesome. It's guilt-free so, living. I thought the Lamb was a sacrifice um, in different religions. Yeah, yeah. But, so the lamb, the lamb was is representative of the sacrifice. Like the lamb actually takes on a lot of different meaning. You know, there's like the, you know, God. You know, Jesus is like the shepherd, and he'll, you know, he he takes care of the flock, and even yeah. like the biggest and the youngest of them. So like the lamb, kind of is that, and then yeah, then there's like, you know, Jesus's death on the cross was like the sacrifice to end all sacrifices. So you didn't you didn't have to make animal sacrifice anymore after after jesus died which is kind of a bonus <clears throat> um yeah so like we have like the relationship that man has with god with the whole eating of the tree of knowledge and experiencing sin having original sin that could never be rectified with god 
So that's why Jesus had to come into the picture so that he, Jesus, in, you know, in theory, fulfills the debt with God that humans could never replace. So it's like Jesus was like the ultimate, the ultimate sacrifice, the ultimate payback to, to God because humans are so, <laughs> so helpless with their, with their sins. Um, okay. Um, could you also look up Holy Spirit? That's what this one is. The, I, I chose this one because I like the symbol better. It's symmetrical. It's kind of going on with our theme. Um, and it's a bird instead of fish. Um, and there's, I think it's a sun. It looks like a sun. And I'm, I also love designing within circles. So it's a circle design that has, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to count them. I'll count the rays, you know, these like kind of triangular rays. There we go. Holy Spirit. In Christianity, the third person of the Trinity, God as spiritually active in the world. And then when the question is asked, this is uh, what is the Holy Spirit? The definition is for the majority of Christian denominations, the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and is almighty God. As such, he is personal and also fully God, co-equal and co-eternal with God, the Father and the Son of God. Nice, nice. Um, yeah, the, the concept of the Trinity has kept many a human uh, baffled and uh, inspired. Anyway, um, yeah, the, 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 it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing to think about. Um, this is so interesting. I never really have, uh, I don't usually have art lessons that are kind of my religion. Do you know what I mean? I, I always, like, in a way, my religion is kind of art, in a way. Um, but then, of course, it's not really. And I just don't usually, when my art, my art is very secular, I think. You know, I don't make a lot of Christian um, artworks. And I don't know, maybe I should. So I'm doing, I'm sketching my original, I'm uh, sketching the circle because it's a circle design. And I'm not looking at my paper, I'm looking at the screen, which is actually a really funny way of, of drawing. Um, <clears throat> Kai, I taught this lesson on Big Bird, um, I don't know, probably like seven or eight years ago. And the way Big Bird functions is that the guy inside the suit, he cannot see out of the suit. So what he has, it's a, it's a guy holding on to a TV camera and he's watching the, the, t, the, the television show. So he's watching what the camera is doing. It's a, it's a live feed into a miniature TV that he has around his neck. So he's looking at himself on the TV and he's moving around based on what he sees outside. So he's holding on to the, the, cam, the, the TV and then his other hand is free to, oh no, excuse me, that's, that's wrong. He's got this camera around his neck. Then one arm is up into the neck of Big Bird and he's like, you know, controlling Big Bird's mouth. And then his other right hand is controlling one of the arms. And they have this like string pulley system so that, you know, the fake Big Bird arm, when, when Big Bird drops one arm, the other arm goes up when he goes up on this side. So they're working in tandem, but one arm is fake and one arm is the actual actor. And then the actor's arm is the mouth and so the the guy who plays Big Bird has to go through this like this whole like acclimation period to get used to seeing himself on the screen and then making his movements accordingly. And I, I mean, that was such a crazy. I mean, this is a really long explanation, but um, making this drawing, I'm looking at the screen versus. You know, looking at the drawing itself, and it's a it's a very strange feeling. You know, kind of controlling the pe the the pencil. All right, so let's just count how many we've got. I assume there's twelve, but there might not be. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Okay, sixteen is easy. 
um, because you basically keep subdividing the entire circle. So you start, you break it in half. So there's two, you know, top and bottom, you know, and then left and right. So we start with one, the circle is one. We break that into four parts. Then we're going to break those um, in half. So we start with one, break, divide that into four. Then we take four, divide that in half to get eight. You know, just like subdividing them like a pizza pie. <clears throat> and then we break those halves, you know, then we break those in half and eight becomes 16. And each one of these rays, you know, can be seen coming out of the middle. And then each one of the triangles is about the same size. It's a little bit of math, but not a whole lot of math. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Watch, I count my rays and they're not, I'm just like not 16. That would be so annoying. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <clears throat> 16. Okay, I got 16. That's good. <clears throat> um, all right. So let's get the bird. And I have the center line of our circle. Yay, we get to start with the circle again. Um, I'm going to say that the base of the bird is in the middle. So I'm going to use an oval for the, for the body. I'm going to use a circle for the head. The overlap, and then I'm going to use a, either a triangle, or you could probably call it a trapezoid for the tail. Um, the wings are the best, um, and I'll explain why. Um, the wings, you can relate to your own arms. So if I make my arm a wing, I have shoulder to elbow, elbow to wrist, and then my wrist to the, my fingertips. Um, each mass kind of progressively gets smaller. So there's shoulder to elbow, which is the biggest, elbow to wrist, which is smaller, and then wrist to the fingertips, which is the smallest. Um, imagine that it's just like in reverse order. So the first form is shoulder to elbow, which is the smallest. And then it goes from elbow to wrist, and then which is the second largest. And then it goes wrist it turns the corner and goes wrist to fingertips. So it's like one, two, three. It makes like a Z, you could call it a Z. I don't know, across, shoulder, elbow, elbow to wrist, sway, swings up, and then comes across wrist to fingertips. And that is kind of the structural arm of the bird. And it's, you know, that's pretty like anatomically correct. Um, and the way that it looks as though, um, if you were to actually draw a real bird, um, each part of the arm has its own set of feathers. So like the wrist to fingertips have big feathers and then the elbow to wrist, those are smaller. And then you have these even smaller ones from the uh, shoulder to elbow. Um, I think that this artist makes our feathers that are attached to the arm um, in two sections. There's one row and then there's the bottom row across angles up and then into the fingertips. So the outside feathers echo the structure of the, um, <clears throat> you know, the arms. So across swells up and then into wingtips. Is my holy is the bird of my holy spirit a little bit bigger than uh, in the design? Yes, it is, and I think it works better. So, I think the I think the bird actually appears to be kind of relatively small. I think there's two feet this way. I think the bird looks small in uh, in the design in you know, out of the book. These are such these are like really 
this is really good vibes. I was not expecting to, to do uh, Christian iconography today. Mm. It feels very good to me. Just like <clears throat> hope and faith and the Holy Spirit are, are just all things that, you know, you can, it's like, it's, it's, it's how do you think about them? Like, how do you just like think about the ideas? You know, especially when you're an artist. Well, these are, dude, Kristen, can you hear Kristen yelling? This dog is driving her crazy. I did for a second. It's driving her crazy. I mean, he just, he, he pees on everything. He's not housebroken. He's like that At young. all? I mean, oh. I'd say like maybe four out of five times. Is she crate training him? Yeah. I mean, maybe he just needs to spend more time in his crate. Yeah. I don't know. But I mean, we're not, crate, we're not training him. We're just watching him for her mom. Oh, and he he will, yeah. Yeah, how's Tucker doing on all that? Great. That's great. no no incidents unless, like, he might throw up every now and then. I think that's just because and that's not you know he's eating something outside. Yeah, that's not on him. You can't complain. right you can't complain. that he's just. I haven't been able to get out see to get out of his mouth. Wait, what? The probe is reading 135. That's, That's pretty cool. Probe. You can see that from where you are. It's amazing. Let me check my history, temperature history. When did you put that in? Okay. <clears throat> that sucks. The temperature probe is really erratic. I can't, I could not have gotten it. Oh, darn. I mean, she put it on at basically 4.55. And what time is it now? It's 5.30? Gotta turn the heat off. Let me cut the heat. Okay, so oh, now, yeah. it's back, no, now it's back to 1.13. Okay, that makes sense. I don't know why it's I don't know why it's acting funny. Uh, uh, I hear a beep. Yeah, it's me. It's the it's the rec tech. All right, here we go. I'm gonna start with my I'm gonna start with my uh, bird first. I'm gonna make the head a little bit narrower. Nice little beak. Yeah, those are definitely um, his little his little dove toes. Hiya, how are you? There's a really nice S curve in those wings. Oh, good. Ah, I like the sound of that. I know, it sounds like this one's going better than the last one. Oh, 
feathers. Um, and then how feathers look and how they layer um, naturally versus how you lay in your pencil, your pen marks. Um, it's just an interesting challenge. You know, uh, you wanna, they, they, the, the wings layer and then the, the feathers layer on the wings rather. And you wanna try to get into the spirit of the way that they, you layer your, 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 your little arcs, the little arc moments accordingly, but it's so small that. And then when you do it right-handed versus left-handed, that's another interesting little. Oh, bar. you're using both? No, I'm just, no, I'm not. Just using my right hand. To, I was going to say, did I miss that? <laughs> well, I mean, it, my, the left, the left side wing layered a lot better than with my right hand for some reason. Um, okay. Like, What's that? You're right hand dominant. Yes or no? Yeah, I'm right hand dominant. I am right handed, but why would the, yeah, I'm trying to figure out why would this left wing look better? Oh, I thought you said the, did you do the left one? Second? Yeah, that could be it. Happy Thanksgiving, tortoises. Happy Thanksgiving, Merlin. All right, so I'm also gonna start, when I'm doing my rays, I was trying to think through them. I think if you start with the middle, like the top of the triangle, and you build down each side of your triangle. You know, even though the rays are radiating outwards, I think starting from the middle, is a safer bet. And then you just, you kind of like go down the mountainside. And I was telling my kids the other day, like you can, I'm, I have, I'm kind of like a little bit locked into position here for the YouTube video, not the YouTube video, but the, the instructional video. But if there is an easier way that if you have to you know, move your paper or angle your paper in a way that makes drawing these rays easier, I mean, I might actually even do that right now. It's just, you know where the middle is. <sighs> so awesome. And um, so, I had a, one of my teachers, his name is Lee Dunsmore and his mom teaches over at Zoll actually. She's a really good painter and a sculptor. Um, he taught me this thing where he made, um, he was like a really, really, really good sculptor. Um, and he was like, you know, in his third or fourth year he was trying to go for like emotional content. And, you know, if you're a figure sculptor you, you have to use a human body or human form and he didn't have any narratives. Like, it's not like he used any costume. But like he tried to get like, um, you know, like a, like, a, a, like a, a tortured soul kind of like emaciated. And he was going for like sadness and bleakness and like kind of like dark ideas, dark notions. Um, and then he made like an elephant that was really playful. And he made, um, you know, he made other like, you know, he made like an angel. He made other sculptures that had different vibes, you know, different um, you know, just like a, the spirit of the sculpture. And he would write down all of these words um, about, you know, whether it was pain, whether it was like hungry, whether it was like happy. And he's just like, what, what the sculpture was gonna be about, he wrote down a list of words and then he would re reference them as he was sculpting. So he could almost like embody that. Um, and I'm saying that because, you know, these are, you know, as I'm drawing these rays of light, like they are rays, they could be a sun, you know, it could be a portal, you know what I mean? Like this could be a portal from the heavens, you know, the heavens opened up, you know, and this realm had things that entered into, you know, from another realm that entered into our realm. And, you know, that's like how the, you know, like understanding the Holy Spirit, you can, you know, or just contemplating the Holy Spirit, will help 
improve the nature of the drawing of the Holy Spirit if you're thinking about it. And you know, you could kind of think about what it means, what it could potentially mean for somebody else, what it means to you, like all you know, all of those things. And it'll just increase the uh, it'll increase the the effectiveness of the of the art. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter necessarily what you're feeling or what you're thinking about. It's just you have to think and feel something. And these these icons or these this iconography or these symbols or signets, um, you know, you should think about the nature of the concept of the thing as you're drawing it, and it will you know embody that that element or that aspect of um, life better. I'm breaking. Yeah, and every and I'm kind of, I feel like I'm kind of getting the hang of these uh, radiating rays. So like I did five well, you know, I started coming up the side and not starting in the middle. Yeah, you don't have there's no there's no exact order. There's no <clears throat> and you know, there's no actual circle either. Like the circle was in the pencil phase which is like, the, you know, it's just a, a very simple construction line that, that in, it, it's not, it doesn't appear in the final, but it's, it's definitely there, which is kind of like the, uh, you know, in a way like the Holy Spirit, we don't necessarily see scientifically the Holy Spirit at work, but you can see it's, you know that it's there. Ooh, I like that. <clears throat> Um, some of these silhouette lines, you know, of the triangle, it looks like they're short up a little bit. You know, they're not they're not full blown lines, but they're they're dark contours. I could lay I could lay my pencils in there, a little bit. or my I can lay my strokes in there a little bit heavier if I want it to stand out a little bit more, especially along that edge. I also don't want to overdo it. <laughs> the view is cooling down. The probe is below 140. Well, that's good. Okay, so it's not, it, the target is 140. It's at 125 right now. That's good. I think the timing is going to be perfect. Once it gets to like 135, 140, maybe, I'll take it off. It'll rest. I think it'll be ready in probably 10 minutes. 15 would be ideal. So what are you serving with? And then I got my I got um, my friend, my French friend um, gave me this um, cheesy potatoes um, recipe. Yeah. yeah. Those are they're gonna be next level. I bought all this fancy cheese to go along with it. All right, well, this is drying. Should I introduce the, the sword of expulsion? <laughs> oh man, the sword of expulsion. That was a sad day. It sounds like it would be. No one wants to. No one wants to get booted from the Garden of Eden. We have to go through this for some reason. I am obsessed with this. <laughs> now I have to figure out what I'm going to, how I'm going to color it.
Yeah, with that pencil gone, I can see where I'm a little light, a little light in my strokes. Maybe I'll extend them even further. Oh, man. What a great moment. I think this happened when John the Baptist baptized Jesus. I think that's what happened. I think the Holy, I think it's the line is the Holy Spirit came down in the form of a dove. Let me just read it. Let me just read it. I'm going to feed uh, Tuck Tuck. I'll be right back. Okay. gosh i found it okay does it say holy the spirit he saw the spirit of god okay let me just read it then jesus came to galilee to the jordan to be baptized by john but john tried to deter him saying i need to be baptized by you um and do you come and and do you come to me question mark um jesus replied let it be so now it is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then, then John consented. So Jesus was like, you need to do this. Um, as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up to the water. At, the, at, at that moment, heaven was opened and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and aligned and alighted on him and alighted on him. And the voice from heaven said, this is my son whom I love, and with him I am well pleased. Okay, so let me just go back to that exact line. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. Okay, so then he, at that moment, heaven was opened. So this is like the heavens opening. And he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and alighted on him. I want to look up that word, alighted. I mean, you think you know what it is, but I don't use that word on a daily basis. Alighted? Alighting on him. All right, then I'm going to color this thing. It's awesome. My everyday vocabulary. Past tense, alighted. Past participle alighted. Um, descend from a train, bus, or other form of transport. Alighted. Never have thought that. Yeah. Um, of a bird descended from the air and settle. A lovely blue swallow alighted on a branch. So it's basically landing. It's basically, it's like a landing. Descended from a train or another form of transport alighted descended wow so let me read it one more time as soon as jesus was baptized he went up out of the water at that moment heaven was opened and he saw the spirit of god descending like a dove and alighted on him so the spirit of god descended like a dove and then landed on right on jesus and the voice from heaven said, this is my son whom I love. With him, I am well pleased. He got the go ahead. Nice. Okay. Oh, man. I just, I'm just going to go with yellow. I'm not going to not go with yellow. I was going to go with, like, try a funky color. I see it as yellow. I don't really want lemon yellow either. Maybe I do want lemon yellow. Let's try lemon yellow. 
Um, there was a Dahlia at the uh, Lemon Yellow. Um, so Kaya, when you start oil painting, um, you there's this super inexpensive form of yellow that they if you buy a set of colors, it usually it's almost always comes with it because it's like dirt cheap. Um, but it's like it's called lemon yellow and it's like super acidic. It's like kind of like a light white tint. Um, it's so hard to use because all the things that you need yellow for, it's not that helpful. Like like flesh tone or, um, you know, like, like when you mix it with blues, you get like weird, like unnatural greens. I and mean, most of the time you need yellow for like green um, and plants and stuff. Um, anyway, so unless you're painting an actual lemon um, mm -hmm. and even that, it's not even the right color. And then I went to the um, Arboretum, um, Silburn Arboretum in, in uh, Baltimore. And they had all these beautiful dahlias. And they had this one yellow dahlia that was exactly the same color as lemon yellow out of the tube. And I've like, I've been to art school. I mean, it's been like 20 years since I've been to art school. I painted even before that. And like, I've struggled with lemon yellow and like how to use it and what you can use it for. And this one flower that I happened to be painting was the exact color. I didn't have to do anything to it. I just slobbered this <laughs> yellow paint and it looked exactly like the flower. And I was like, that's funny. I was like, I'm 40 years old and I finally found an object that you could use this color for. Um, but this is the, this is a nice, this is nice. And obviously there's a, a sun association, you know, with these, with this, with this portal that heaven has opened. Wow. Um, I, I, I actually, my drawing, it feels like the dove has like, uh, like suspension. You know, it feels like it's like hung in the air and it's about to come down. This feels like it's, this feels like okay. not. I, I think, wow. and, it, and I think it's because my wings are wow. kind of overlapping the, the rays. So like the, it's almost like this, the, the dove penetrated out and created the, the the explosion versus this one where it's like feels like this dove is placed inside of some other explosion. Yeah, yours yours is exploding outward, and it's. Yeah. I think the size really makes a difference. I think so too. Yeah, and um, I really like how I could not be I could not be happier with the drawing. This this paper, this mulberry paper, I don't think this whole book, I'm going to go through the book. I don't think I've made a bad sketch in the entire thing. I like how your wings go up and into, uh, each wing goes up and into the uh, triangulation of the, what is that called? The, the ray, the, the ray. Thank you, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm feeling, I'm feeling good. Now the question is, should I make it like a blue sky? Should I make like, yeah, I'll do that. Maybe I'll make it like it was coming out of the, oh. know, popping the night the sky open. Can you freeze your hand right there? Whoops, there. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for taking the picture. Oh, you're so welcome. And I would really like to get your others. And uh, of course, of course, Kai, I, I am tongue tied tonight. Yours as well. Mm -hmm. I really like that blue and your mark making is echoing the uh, rays. Yeah, yeah. I used to when I was drawing I used to make things look um I used to like kind of have in the inclination to do a move you know like use yellow or whatever I mean it's like clearly a sun so like use yellow and then I'd be like no anyone everyone else would use yellow I'm not going to use yellow and and then I've just decided to like not I've kind of like 
decided to like listen to, you know, it's okay to be a little bit obvious. It's okay to be a little bit cliche. Um, it's better. I mean, things, I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just, I guess I'm saying like, some of these decisions might be a little bit obvious, um, but it makes it, it makes it stronger. Hmm. I've always tried to break from convention as like my personality type. I don't like to follow rules and I don't like to listen to what I, I don't like to do, have anyone tell me what to do. <laughs> um, and, but convention, you know, sometimes conventions are, um, standards are, you know, sometimes the convention is, is a good thing. And it's that, it's, well, it is that way for a reason. And the other thing that that immediate comes to my, immediately comes to mind is how you've said many times, you know, you have to learn the rules to break them. Oh yeah. With, with art and the masters and the, the rules of art. Yeah, I mean, that is it a little bit, you know, having to learn the rules before you can break them. But also, you know, sometimes following the rules, you know, the, the, in that statement, it's like the, the point is to break the rules. And occasionally it's necessary. But really, it's usually better to follow the rules. <laughs> That's the point. The point is, is like I've, I've worked so hard to learn everything so that I could break them. And now I've like swung the opposite way where it's like, no, I don't, I don't longer need to break the rules. I don't need to because it's, it's actually better to not in most, yeah, but, in, many, in many cases. But I think that you only have that appreciation because you've mastered the basics. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. because I've been so obnoxious for so many years. Exactly. Well, it's not to say you're completely not obnoxious. But, right. <laughs> Um, okay, okay. Yeah. We got to take the meat off. Take the meat off. Take it off. Trevor, can I see uh, the pictures that you did earlier? Yeah. I don't know how these, did we only do three? How could that take an hour and a half? No, you also did the one that uh, with the dolphins, with the curved lines. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, three. Right, right, right. The face. Ah, I'm so bad at letters. It's okay. Oh, and then here's the faith. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we only did three drawings. Yes. All right. Okay, Kaya, may I see yours? Can we see yours? Sure. Um, Stace, did you want a drawing? I did. Oh, hold on, Kaya. Oh, cool. That wow. So good. Yeah. I love your star. Yeah. Oh, oh. Did you get a picture of that, Stace? Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah, Kaya, great work. That was fun. Yeah. I hope it looked like it was fun for you. I don't know. 
I can't yeah. read your mind, but there's a nice page. Um, replace pen. Stace, can we see yours? Yeah. I didn't follow the rules, but I had a ton of fun. Did you use color? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I did hope, but I. Look at I that. Used the navy, the naval wings. Mm hmm. Because I, I just saw it as a sailor ocean type of. Piece. Dynamite. Uh, your handwriting is so cool, too. Oh, thank you. All right. That's a win. That's a big win. Thanks. This was great. This was very informative. It was good. In a way that I've not been educated. Yeah, well, I'm glad you got to have it. Yeah. Um, all right. I'm gonna go take care of the, I'm gonna go take care of these potatoes. <laughs> I know we're I'm we're stopping a little bit early, but it was stellar. It was stellar. Thank you so much, Trevor. Enjoy your, your dinner. It sounds great. I will. We'll have you over soon. All right. That sounds Kaya, great. We'll see you. See you, Stace. Okay. Bye, Kaya. Bye. Bye.